They said there's a restraining order. They won't even let me in to see her now. To hold my own baby. It's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. She's sick. We don't know what's wrong with her. That's why Dr. McCabe is here. The DA, she says my husband's been hitting Emma, but he would never, ever. On my life, I know he didn't hurt our little girl. doesn't even know that I called you. You have to hurry up. You think I want to drag this out? Hey, Emma. How you doing, sweetie? Just have to do a couple little checks here. That's it. Very good. Okay, sweetheart. Can you look at me? Can you look at me, sweetie? Look at me, sweetie. Can you look over here? What does that mean, Miles? It means this looks like abuse. Sorry, but it does. I mean, the poor kid's been beaten to where she can't even hear anymore. How severe are the head injuries? Well, I didn't actually see any head injuries, and the MRI came back completely clear. Miles, what color are the whites of the baby's eyes? Wouldn't they be white? Find out. Call me back. It's a building they have in common. No bros. Local diner, big breakfast crowd. Every patient ate there in the past 12 hours. Well, it can't be food poison. The symptoms are all wrong. Plus, if you're talking about a big crowd, there'll be a lot more cases than this. Look, I don't know what happened, but I know where. This is your building. That was Wes Douglas's daughter. I told her her father was in critical condition. She said she had nothing to say to him and hung up the phone. I need to talk to you about Dobros. Did you reach my daughter? You were still trying. We've isolated the problem to the diner, so let's go back. Let's start when you walked into the place. She was born eight weeks early. She was so little. Well, three and a half pounds. And they can do pretty amazing things with preemies. She was so tiny. And so strong. Beautiful. I knew then that it was going to change my life. For her. Hey, kids will do that to you. Except... I never changed anything. Not one damn thing. Not one. Ball still in the air? It wasn't Wilson or Spalding. It was Rowling's. See what happens when you focus. So proud of you, pal. 
Yeah, first tip this season, pretty tight, huh? Very tight. The championship game tomorrow, are you gonna make it? I'll do everything I possibly can to be there. You talk to Mom? Okay, just a Mom, it's Dad. Is everything all right? But I can't just check in every once in a while. Well, you should try Jack back later. Mrs. Brewster is babysitting, and I think he finds her extremely dull. Where are you going? To dinner. With who? <sighs> Stephen, we have to move on. Yeah, I know you keep saying that, but uh, the reason for it is, is kind of escaping me a bit. I'm sorry, Stephen. I got to go. What's the clock? 12 hours, 40 minutes from the moment he collapsed until his death. That leaves Eleanor Cochran with two hours, 10 minutes. I don't care what his daughter said. Call her back. Michelle Cochran's fluids, dilantin, 50 milligrams IM. If her respirations drop below 10... Intubate her. I've done this before. I'll get samples back from the diner as quickly as possible. In fact, I'll use McCabe and I'm back and forth. McCabe, right. There's that. There's what? We got another case. A baby in Virginia with spontaneous bruising. We don't have time for another case. You know we don't have time for another case. We'll find it. The chopper had to go back to Washington anyway. You think this kid's a pain in the ass? You already sent him, didn't you? Quite a while ago. Damn it, Natalie. I can't afford you taking time out to supervise him. If I say I can handle it, I can. No, you can't. We lost one patient already. How many more are you willing to lose? None, which is why I will not turn away from someone who needs us. You're talking about one child versus a city of eight million whose lives are at risk. You made a bad choice. In case you've forgotten, Stephen, for those parents, that one baby is the entire universe. <sighs> They're jerking me around, of course. Yeah, another 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, they know I'm a reporter. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll call. <sighs> Don't you hate hospitals? Hate. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Just put my phone down. Did you see it? Your phone? Yeah. Sorry. Owner's name is Daryl Cooley. Cooley. Mr. Cooley, open up. Mr. Cooley. We don't have time for this. I don't like the sound of that. Hey! All right, all right, all right, man, come on. All right, so I tipped a few back last night. Just give me the cup, and let's get this done. What, y'all not from parole? 
Mr. Cooley, a man is dead and more will die because something that happened in this restaurant in the last 24 hours. What? Look, I need you to call everyone who works here today and get them down here now. <laughs> oh, I remember that time as being so free. Hanging out on this little Greek island, incredible food. Oh, and the beaches. I used to sunbathe hopless, sometimes even naked, and nobody ever cared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, why would they? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to grab some dinner? No, I'm sorry. That was, that was a, a jerk thing to say, because I know your dad's upstairs recovering from surgery, and I'm asking you out. It's OK. I'd like to have dinner with you. So, uh, what do you feel like? Oh, I, I didn't mean tonight. What about your dad? Well, he's recovering, like you said. And the girl's got to eat, right? You know, whatever's upstairs must be one hell of a scoop for you to go to all this trouble. What do you work for? Leave this one alone, Mr. Novak. When it's safe to give you this story, I promise you'll be the first one I call. Well, that's touching. Now give me my phone back, because I'm going to file this story with or without your help. Fine. Meet me here in 20 minutes. I'll give you your phone and your story. Incredible. The whites of her eyes, they're not white. They're blue. Which means? I don't think she's been abused. I think we're dealing with an orphan disease. A what? It's a disease so rare, it's almost never diagnosed correctly. Is that supposed to be reassuring? I'm gonna have to take a DNA sample to make double sure, but I need a DNA kit. Send a sample rushed to the NIH. In less than two hours, they can get it back. And... Dr. McCabe, this is uh, Dr. Strickland, my attending, uh, DA Musgrave. What the hell are you doing, Kelly? Dr. McCabe, it's the senior staff only that invite visiting doctors. I know. And I'm sorry. But the good news is, I think I'm coming close to understanding what's going on with the Haskell baby. What's to understand? The child's been abused. With all due respect, I don't think so. I think she's sick, and I think I can prove it with a DNA sample. We already did a genetic workup. It came back completely normal. An orphan disease would not show up in a regular genetic workup. Dr. McCabe, I want you out of here. The last time I checked, the NIH does not involve itself in the jurisdictions of family services and the local police. Then let me tell you what the NIH involves itself in. Answers. Your tax dollars pay for the NIH so that when, God forbid, some unforeseen, nasty, never before seen or heard of calamity strikes you, Dr. Strickland, that some rubber stamping bureaucrat doesn't write you off without even trying, which is why I'm going to take this DNA sample. And if you don't like it, you can call your local police and have me hauled out of here in leg irons. That's exactly what we're going to do. Leg irons? We better get this sample fast. Dr. Miles goes to jail. Okay. They're not happy, but they're on their way. Thank you. Yeah. When? Okay. Three more patients showed up. That's 12 victims total. Oh, man. Somebody else is dying? Listen closely. All that matters right now is you. You need to focus right now on what we're doing here. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Walk me through your routine. Okay, come on. 